What's up? Welcome back to. The that actually, that wasn't too bad. Welcome back to the channel, man. Today we are talking Cleveland Cavaliers because they're doing a phenomenal job. You know, they, they really are doing a phenomenal job. And uh, with the jump they took from last season or two seasons ago to last season, making the play-in tournament, they, their future is nothing but bright. Their future is nothing but bright. They had a really, really good draft low-key. I mean, I really like Oche Agbad. I like Oche, Oche Agbaji. I apologize. That is going to be probably a little bit of a struggle, actually, for me. If I'm still saying Shen Goon's name wrong and I've been covering Rockets for a year and a half, I apologize. No offense. None taken. Anyways, this video is all over the place. Jesus. The Cleveland Cavaliers are a very good, very talented basketball team. Um, DG, the PG, Evan Mobley. Um, I like nice pieces like Laurie Markin and Karis LeVert. We'll see what happens with Colin Sexton. My guess is that Colin Sexton returns to the Cleveland Cavaliers on like somewhere around $20 million. Jared Allen, extremely underrated. The Cavs, to me, are just a bunch of underrated players. And some of the stuff that they've done this offseason, even, it, it's, it's flying really below the radar. Like, you almost have to go out of your way. You don't almost have to. You have to go out of your way to kind of look at Cavaliers news. So, today they officially announced the re-signing of Ricky Rubio. Bro, I can't even, words can't even describe. I was talking about this on my Cavs channel. By the way, Cavs fans, I made a Cleveland Cavaliers, or sorry, actually, I made a Cleveland sports channel. The link's going to be pinned in the comment section. I made it with my boy Ryan. We just made it, so stay tuned, but go drop a sub. But I was talking about this in my video yesterday. Like, words genuinely can't describe the impact Ricky Rubio had on the squad last season. Cleveland in general was, I mean, bro, they, they got shafted so hard. It felt like all season. Injury here. Injury there. Oh, hiccup. Injury there. 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 Like, it was just a bunch of injuries. Colin Sexton goes down 11 games into the season, and from there it was just... I can't, like, I am just so happy for the Cavaliers and their squad, JB, everybody, top to bottom, for the tenacity, the, the work that they put in, given everything that not only was expected of them, because none of that was expected from them, the, the season they had, this fast, and just, I mean, going on, like, you got a problem, they're just solving problems, bro. JB Juice, he's a problem solver. Colin Sexton goes down. All right, let's get Rubio. Rubio was money for Cleveland. He was money for Cleveland. They re-signed him today. Or it was officially announced that he got re-signed today. His injury was a huge catastrophic blow to the Cavaliers that it essentially ended the season. I don't mean it in a sense where... You know, all right, they're not making the playoffs, but, you know, there was a point in time, kind of around, I remember making bathrooms in my bathroom when I was in Mexico for work, late January. I remember there was a time late January, early January, where the, the thought process could be, how, how, how deep can Cleveland go? Because hold on, they're beating some really solid teams and they had a very it might have been the most difficult schedule in the first half of the season and they really excelled I mean, they were beating good teams they were staying in games that they you know barely lost like they, it was just a very good first half of the season for the Cavs and then just kind of injuries the injury bug caught up to them but also today they announced the signing of Raul Nato that's a very low-key very good depth veteran presence move robin lopez an extremely underrated below the radar uh, this is it's just a good move take it from a bulls fan man i i know he, robin lopez was on the bulls a while ago but 
I mean, he can still contribute. Obviously, you don't want Robbie Lopez necessarily to be like an 82 game shoe in starter. But that is a very good insurance veteran depth piece to bring in. The Colin Sexton, I, I, I think Colin Sexton, it's still up in the air. Apparently, there's no market, and I really want Sexton to return because I want Sexton and Lavert to have almost a very similar role where they're just putting up buckets. They are playmaking, you know, here and there, they're setting up their teammates because Lavert and Sexton, they're not known passers, distributors, assist guys, but it's something they can do. It is something they can do. And so whether, whether you know, it's Sexton starting, whether it is Lavert starting, whatever the deal is going to be, they're just two really good scoring options and guys who can really just change the script of a game just like that. Outside of those two cats, you know, it, from the starters, I don't even really know where to begin. I need to make a lot more Cavs videos on this channel. That's why I made the, the Cleveland Sports channel to just talk more Cleveland Sports, Cavs in specific. Isaac Okoro is one of the most enticing prospects in the league to me. I mean, this guy's barely been in the NBA. There were a lot of, there was a good amount of games last season where the three-pointer was falling. And, you know, yeah, it doesn't matter. Maybe some of them were, some games it was in the corner. But there were a lot of games where that three was falling. And that was the biggest hurdle for Isaac Okoro because he came into the NBA defensive NBA ready immediately. The defense was going to give him playing time. And the defense earned him more playing time. And then this past season, it was like, shit. And Isaac Okoro is scoring on his own. He's making some threes. Is there some actual potential here for Isaac Okoro to be a two-way star in this league? Damn straight. Damn, damn, damn straight. Laurie Markkinen. Once again, I'm a Bulls fan. This is the role that fits Laurie perfectly. But as a Bulls fan, you know, picking him number seven a handful of years ago, that wasn't what I had anticipated. That's not what I wanted from Laurie. But this is a guy who, first off, at the end of the season, he was making some really sexy clutch threes. That injury in the middle of the season definitely hurt. Like I said at the beginning of the video, man, injuries really just devastated Cleveland. But Laurie Markkinen is just perfect, bro. He can shoot the three. He can score down below. He can finish at the rim. He can play some very good defense. He's long. He's seven feet tall. 6'11". Seven feet with shoes. Laura Markin and his money. Evan Mobley, I don't even need... They got Isaiah Mobley. They got his brother. So you might have the Mobley mob brothers in a couple of years dominating the NBA on the Cleveland Cavs. But for now, you got Evan Mobley and Jared Allen down low. You essentially have three seven-footers. And it just poses so many goddamn issues for opposing teams. And once again, stay healthy. I genuinely... I don't know. I, I can't put a ceiling. I can't put a floor on, on the Cavs. I mean, the floor, I would imagine, is, is playoffs. It, it's just, this is a very good team. So outside of those guys, um, you know, like I said, I like the Robin L Lopez move. Obviously, you got K-Love, who just had a phenomenal... Kevin Love is the guy that keeps the ship going to me. I mean, outside, you know, obviously, I know JB has a huge impact on the squad, but Kevin Love is kind of that, I'm trying to think of that word, like, obviously, he's a veteran presence, but he's kind of that X factor almost for the Cavs, because he had an extremely efficient year last year, so he's he's got plenty of gas left in the tank entering his, I think, fifth, 15th season, I want to say, that's my guess. There's still gas in the tank, he still is a great scoring and rebound contributor, and especially when an injury might come up or you just want to rely on somebody at some point in the game, Kevin Love is money for it. Lamar Stevens, Dylan Windler, Chetty Osman. This is a solid-ass team. And then I can't believe I barely talked about DG, the PG, but I feel like it goes without saying he's one of the best point guards, one of the best young point guards in the entire league. Uh, the fact that this guy is 21 years old, it has me contemplating life choices sometimes. It's like, damn, bro, he's... He's this freaking good for 21 years old. Like, it is just super cool. I love watching DG the PG. And he already kind of is ascending, ascending to stardom. But you're going to see that even doubled some way, somehow, this next season. He's a great passer. He's a great distributor. He just can control a game. He's good on defense. He gets the job done, man. So I'm, I'm very, very excited. And I'm very hopeful for the Cavaliers next season. Oche is... 
a rookie from Kansas. He averaged like 19 points per game. He shot, what, 42% from downtown. This is almost what Isaac Okoro is looking like he's kind of turning into right now. So you got a really solid 3 and D player in o o Oche Agbaji. My boy Serio on our NBA show that we do every day, like he is so big on him and it makes sense. He want, he want, he goes to Kansas, so it is a little biased, but it makes sense. I can see why he loves him so much. There is nothing but hype around Oche. So I think he's going to fit in with Cleveland perfectly. At this point, it's almost like they have a lot of mouths to feed. I'm very curious to see how they feed all these mouths. So that's it for today, man. Let me know some thoughts down below on the Cleveland Cavaliers. Once again, I will link the Cavaliers or the sorry the Cleveland Sports Channel that Ryan and I made down below check that out and um, if you want more Cavs videos on this channel go ahead drop that down below hit the like button hit that sub button you know the deal peace yo